But to look your enemy in the eye, knowing you'll remember his face for the rest of your life, now that takes a stomach much stronger than you'll ever have. All of Cobol is a total conversion for Sins of a Solar Empire Rebellion, converting the setting of the RTS from its base format to the Battlestar Galactica universe. Taking on the role of either the human, colonial forces or the robotic Cylons, Fall of Cobol provides an enjoyable and fun alternative to the recent Battlestar Galactica Deadlock game, for players that prefer a real-time strategy as opposed to the turn-based format that Deadlock uses. Both the colonial and the Cylon races allow you to choose from either a loyalist or rebel faction containing key differences to the way that you play. Taking the colonial forces as an example, its loyalist force has a greater focus on trade and diplomacy within its research, and on defensive tactics as opposed to offensive ones. This is reflected in its Titan, the Jupiter-class Titan Star. This Titan operates as a fleet command and control vessel, and is focused on helping the survivability of the fleet. The colonial separatists, however, are more focused on raiding and offence, as they believe that there can be no diplomacy with their enemy. Their Titan, the Cetus-class Titan Star, focuses on dealing massive damage to its enemies, but doesn't function as a bulwark to the fleet, and as such is of no help to any would-be allies. Fall of Cobol replaces the stock planets of Sins of a Solar Empire with sympathetically designed planets from the Cobol collection, bringing an immersive visual aspect to the mod outside of the obvious ship replacement. Pirates and planetary defenders have also been replaced from the stock versions, bringing Cylon vessels into further usage for both of these roles. Be warned, however, the pirates in Fall of Cobol can be a far greater threat than stock pirates, bringing much larger fleets to bear against you in the later stages of any match. Let's take a general look at each faction. We'll start with the Colonials. The Colonials as a whole have tough ships that carry very reasonable direct firepower and often limited fighter capacity to supplement it. Their greatest strength is in their ability to tank damage and outlast their enemies while pummeling them into dust. As a fleet, their ships are more sluggish than their opponents, and as a result of this, they aren't well suited to lightning raids or hit and run tactics, making them a more deliberate, considered faction that seeks to bring their opponents into open battle and crush them by picking the enemy fleet apart, while tenaciously tanking everything the enemy can throw at them. Moving on to the Cylons. In contrast to the Colonials, the Cylon fleet is generally faster, can't take nearly as much damage, and focuses more on missile damage as opposed to projectile fire. In most engagements, the Cylons will find that they numerically have the advantage, particularly in the fighter department, and if they can maintain fighter superiority, their bombers can be very effective against individual targets. This numerical focus ties into a unique aspect of the Cylon design, Resurrection. It's fair to say that the Cylon fleet is, overall, weaker than the Colonial fleet. To counter this, using a resurrection hub and resurrection vessels tied into a network, the Cylons are able to resurrect portions of their fallen fleet by downloading the consciousness of the fallen vessels into a new shell, then throwing them back into the fight. This means that when using this feature, the Cylons never seem to run out of reinforcements, allowing them to whittle their enemies down during a protracted engagement. Before I let you try out the mod for yourselves, as always there's a link in the description below, I should talk about my personal opinion of the best and worst things in the mod. Let's start with the best things. Fall of Cobal combines excellent research, abilities, and an interesting balancing mechanic that works fairly well, as long as the Cylon players know how to use it, to create a mod that feels very fleshed out from a mechanical point of view. As a coder, I really value the attention to detail that's gone into Fall of Cobol. Moving on to the worst things in the mod. These are fairly minor complaints, but I feel that some of the ships are below par from a visual quality perspective. Some of them lacking quality bump mapping and therefore appearing to lack depth, and some of the models and textures being below the quality bar of others. This variance in model quality can be a bit frustrating as some of the vessels look absolutely beautiful. Some of the sounds used are from the stock game, particularly gunfire sounds, and that despite being reasonable from a usage perspective, wrenches me as a player from my immersion. Despite these minor complaints, the positives to the mod massively outweigh the negatives in every way. I'd highly recommend Fall of Cobol to any player that loves the Battlestar Galactica aesthetic as much as I do. I hope you've enjoyed this short mini-review of Fall of Cobol. As always, if you've seen an awesome mod or indie game that you'd like me to take a look at, let me know in the comments and I'll take a look at it and consider reviewing it if I think that it's right for the channel. There's no right or wrong game, and any great mod in any genre is welcomed as a suggestion. If you like my reviews and aren't already a subscriber to the channel, hit the sub button and bell for more weekly reviews and consider sharing this video as more viewers might create more suggestions and help make sure I don't miss any amazing games or mods to check out. For now ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching, and as always, stay magnificent.